Give me that Xbox. When you think about it, gaming is an expensive hobby. The bare minimum you need to play a video game outside of a handheld is a TV, a games console, the video game itself, and finally some electricity to power the bastard thing. And maybe all of these things. After processing all this, it really is cheeky that companies ask us for even more money to purchase accessories. Some make sense like an extra controller or a battery pack, but when a company tries to flog a gimmick and then make games only for that gimmick, it can really rub people the wrong way. Even worse, what if the company is forcing the gimmick upon us? We saw this firsthand with uh, Microsoft and the Xbox One where they were forcing the Kinect to be used to even operate the Xbox One. People hated it and they pulled out faster than insert sex joke here. I bring up all these points because whenever I talk about the PlayStation Move to someone, it's meant with deep negativity last and declarations of not buying the accessory due to the fact that its creation is a joke and because of its price points coming in at around 90 British pounds at launch for a PSI camera one move controller and a starter demo disc well what have I told you this the PS move controllers these controllers that have been mocked throughout its entire existence are still being used in 2020 10 years later this is because they are used as motion controllers for the PlayStation VR which has resulted in the controllers shooting up in price resulting in a double pack of PS move controllers being near the price of a starter pack at launch. Sony reported they had shipped 15 million PS Move controllers as of November 2012, which I can only assume has gone up a fair bit by now due to the aforementioned PSVR inclusion. I'm really curious if Sony thinks the PS Move was a success or not. The fact that they made the PSVR motion controllers the PS Move, um, I would assume that they had so much extra stock that they had to get rid of and just thought, screw it, let's save some money here. PS Move controllers, go! Saying all of that, uh, 10 years of support from Sony is actually pretty damn great, as uh, their history of supporting products is a bit, um... Bad. Perhaps it's because I'm a rather sad specimen of a human being, but I love the idea of accessories. Five years after they've come out because only then are they worth the money, and also the games that are made for them are now dirt cheap. The PlayStation Move has been in my video making mind since 2010 when I got the PS Move as a Christmas present, and today people, I want to walk you through my PS Move collection, and together we can see if any of them are worth your time. A quick history lesson though if I may. We all know the Wii, right? We all got one, check under your bed, you might have one hiding. Well, after that smash hit, everyone else in the gaming industry wanted a piece of that lovely money pie. This is simply what led us to the PS Move and Connect's creation, and of course, all those glorious Wii knockoffs. What exactly is the PlayStation Move though? Well, it's a motion controller for Sony's PlayStation 3 console. Identifiable by its squishy ball top, which glows when it's turned on. It has motion sensing, location tracking, and all around it's just a better Wii Remote than the Wii Remote ever was. The controller itself feels nice in the hand, with your index finger sitting on the trigger, with your thumb resting around all five buttons that you may need to press during a game. Honestly, I like it. You may be asking yourself, however, how exactly do you move in these games without a thumbstick? Well, hold on to that thought. Final note about the controller itself, there are two models of the PlayStation Move controller, one that works with just the PS4 and one that works with the PS3 and PS4. The ways to tell them apart is that the buttons have different textures to them and on the bottom the charging ports are different. Uh, on screen here are the differences. Setup is rather simple, plug in your acquired PlayStation camera, sync your Move controller to the console by plugging it in via a cable, the correct one, and calibrate your PS Move controller which is normally done once you boot up a game. Calibration normally comes down to either pointing at your chest and your shoulders with a Move controller or just pointing at the camera depending on the game. Instead of a Wii sensor bar keeping track of the controller's movements we have the PSI camera doing it instead, keeping track of the move controller by following the glowing light on the tip of the controller. I've always had a soft spot for the light on the move controller. Some games thought of nice ways to have the light be a little gimmick such as having the colour indicate how close your weapon was to overheating in say uh, PlayStation Move Heroes. Plus I loved playing with the move in the dark as a kid as it made me feel like I was holding some special wands to control my game. Nowadays I just use it to emulate a rave in my living room because I'm too scared to actually go to a rave in fear that I'll come across a doctor under the name of Dr. M. DMA. The controller itself can be used for menu navigation on the home screen of the PS3 and it clears through the XMB really fast and you adapt quite quickly to using it as a navigation controller. Although it's not usable in any media app so I don't think you can flick your way through YouTube or Netflix anytime soon. But these things are only accessories to the accessory. Let's dig into the video games. To begin, I must commend Sony for still doing demos. While the PlayStation VR demo collections are only available via download, which I'm honestly fine with, the PS Move starter pack actually comes with a little disc full of demos. This disc comes with your typical, here's how you set up the doohickey video, but more importantly here, there are a fair few demos. Are any of them worth it though? Let's find out. TV superstars. No. I mean, look at it. No. It's a game show and besides Buzz, has there ever been an actual good game show video game that is actually fun more than once? Echo Chrome 2. 
A nice little puzzler about getting a Shadow Man from point A to point B via Shadows. I like the idea a lot, but to be honest, if you want a good game of Shadows, the last story on the Wii is pretty sick. Saying that, this game actually won me over, and when the demo was over, I wanted to play more. Yeah, I contradicted myself, I just wanted to mention the last story briefly. Nobody I've met in my life has played it. It's a good game. Okay. Your move controller emulates a light source, and that can be moved around to create paths for the Shadow Man to walk, jump and fall towards the goal, which at times itself is hidden. It's a really relaxing puzzle game with a lovely soundtrack, and I also love that there's a hidden shadow drawing in each level. For example, a snake and a smiley face. Uh, I'd play more of this. Tumble! A puzzle game where you stack blocks. The move controller does help make the game more fun than if it was done normally, but I feel depth perception here is a bit odd. By that I mean it feels really weird to move around in a 3D space where I'm not in the space where the blocks are. Saying that, playing Tumble VR kind of spoiled me here as I like that game a lot more and feel it's a wicked way to introduce someone into VR and just a better game than Tumble ever was. You know what, I wouldn't mind talking about the PlayStation VR one day. Anyways, iPad Move Edition! Okay, hear me out here. Is there any good pet game out there? I mean, a game where the entire point of the game is to look after a pet. I think a pet mechanic in a game where you actually take care of an animal could be a nice little mechanic in, say, an RPG, but a full game around it? You all are praying for them dead Tamagotchis? Screw that, man's out here with his hands clapped for all them dead eye pets out there. Poor bastards. Poor creepy and cute looking bastards. Mainly creepy. Start the party! I got eye toy vibes from this, uh, at least from the minigames. Uh, I'm all alone, so I couldn't actually start any party, and this game may be okay for like 30 minutes, but the most interesting thing about this game is it's made by Supermassive Games. You know, the Until Dawn guys and gals. Side note, the Until Dawn game is actually pretty damn good. Uh, not this one, uh, this one. Never this one. SPORTS CHAMPION! It's no Wii Sports with games like fucking Bocce, but I had fun with this game at points. So far, I've played all these games set on my ass, but this is one of those PS Move games that requires you to stand up. But to be honest, you can cheat it a bit by just tilting the camera. This is also one of the games we'll be covering that can use two controllers to emulate both arms in game. For example, in Gladiator Duel, one arm controls a sword while the other controls a shield. This minigame itself is fine, but the AOS combat ability can go from blindfolded OAP to deathstroke at a moment's notice. Uh, but all around, it was fine. Table Tennis was absolutely wicked. It's more of an on-rails experience, and I'm sure Rocket Fury VR and a few other ping pong games are better, but the move controller works so damn great for this, and it feels one-to-one. -one. And I'd be happy to get a mate and play 1v1 in this game. I mean, for the price of this game and two move controllers, space dependent, I could actually just get a ping pong table and we could play in real life. Hm. The previously mentioned bocce works, but who thought this would be fun more than once? Beach Volleyball was yet another on rails experience, which is odd because the extra space of a volleyball court versus a ping pong table, you think you could have had a more free flowing open ended game mode here. The left controller could have been used for movement while the right controller could have been used, you know, hit the actual ball. But I guess it just worked out badly in pre-production. I just feel on rail sometimes is used as a crutch more than something to aid user experience. I just finished watching three seasons of Haikyuu in a marathon before recording, and sadly I did not get my over the top anime experience I wanted from this. One day I'll get a hyper stylized volleyball game. One day. Quick side note, but speaking about hyper stylized anime sports games, hopefully that Captain Tsubasa game is good, that football game, as um, we're never going to get a Mario Strikers again probably, so this will be the next best thing hopefully. Archery works fine, but I didn't find it very fun personally. Other games I'll cover in this video do bow and arrow gameplay a lot better and made it more fun, but it's here I guess if you want it. Finally we have Disc Golf. It works well on a technical level, but I don't find golf a very fun video concept to begin with, so making the ball a frisbee isn't exactly going to help. Overall, an okay package. I would fully, fully, fully recommend table tennis as it was really dang fun, but it was the only one to make me smile and make me feel like I was really competing with the AI. The rest of the game modes were average to fine to botchy. Beat Sketch! What is this? Well, that's the starter disc done. Uh, some good games, some bad games, but you know, they were games. The problem is right with those games, you need this to play them. They just don't work without the PlayStation Move controller. But a bit like the Kinect, there are some games out there that have PlayStation Move features. So you know, they're full games, but there are some extra goodies tucked away behind this little squishy ball. And in my opinion, once we delve into the PlayStation features side of the PS Move catalog, this device gets really interesting. Certain games have this on the top of its box, saying that the PS Move is not required but compatible with the game. This means that there are some extras for the game in question tucked away behind this dildo-shaped paywall, or perhaps a whole new control scheme. 
Uh, for example, uh, Top Spin 4 and Virtua Tennis 4. Uh, I'll stop that now, I promise. For example, Top Spin 4 and Virtua Tennis 4 both allow you to use the Move Controller to swing. With Virtua Tennis 4, a game I love by the way, whereas Virtua Tennis 5 Sega, providing an on rails experience by the look of it with Top Spin 4, just letting you swing with the Move Controller while you move around with either the DualShock 3 or the Navigation Controller. Oh yeah, movement! You may have noticed up until now, everything that we've played is either on rails or doesn't require movement, a trait that carries through many PlayStation Moves first party releases, and something we will definitely see again. But what options do you have if the game requires movement? Thankfully you're able to use your DualShock 3, but if you're more comfortable spending even more money on a light up pleasure device, you can pick up the navigation controller. It's just a more comfortable left side of a DualShock 3, but it works well enough and it even comes with an X and O button, mostly used to menu navigation. Outside of playing the PlayStation Move games, I use this controller when I use my PS3 as a Blu-ray player, but if you're thinking of doing the exact same as I do, uh, you can get a PS3 media controller for a lot cheaper than a Navi controller, just a heads up. This is more of a nunchuck for the PS Move than a dedicated controller, and um, yeah, they really weren't hiding their inspiration, were they? I'm really happy Sony made this, as that means there's more games out there that I can play now with the PlayStation Move, including some that you really wouldn't think of if I said PlayStation Move to you. Well, while we're taking a break from the PS Move exclusive games, let's dive into those PS Move feature games, as I think some of these will surprise you with um, their PS Move inclusion. I know at least two did for me, and one of them is a massive game. Continuing the Wii comparison, often the Move controller itself is used as camera controls, most commonly with shooters. Firstly, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, massive game on the PC which I recently jumped into, and although the community is mainly Russian and full of meanies who say mean words to me, I commend Valve for keeping updates coming since its release in 2012, constantly evolving the game, adding new modes, providing new updates, and more. Can't say that about the console version though. That's right, this game lost support in 2013, which means it never got any massive big overhauls that CSGO got over the years. This game is a time capsule of yesteryears. Uh, no skins, no marketplace, an ecosystem, just gameplay. Not good enough? Well, let's bring these into the equation. Yeah, you saw where this was going, and you can clearly see that this isn't the best way to play a fast-paced shooter outside of playing against bots. It looks like it works fine overall, but CS is not a game where I would play with motion controls. The same goes for Killzone 3. It works well enough, I guess, but nothing special and I would rather not play the story with this control scheme. Same yet again for Time Crisis Raising Storm, a light gun game that came equipped with an exclusive PS Move FPS campaign. It's horrendous. Not only first person shooters came with move support, third person ones did too, such as uh, Tom Clancy Future Soldier. This is an odd one. I tried to get it to work for ages, even going into co-op to try to get it to work. Turns out, it's only usable in certain menus, in the gun viewing bit, and in the firing range. What is the point? It controls like ass, so maybe Ubisoft had a fire they couldn't put out, so they just relegated move support to these modes, so they could still have that little mark on the box that says this flashy, rigid member works with this game. This game also worked with the Kinect too? Oh god. At least Bioshock Infinite had alright compatibility with the PS Move. Nice palette cleanser, right? Well, there is one more surprise for you. Portal 2, great game, right? Game of the year for that year, perhaps game of that decade. Yeah, I never finished it. It was 2011, I just discovered that the penis can do more things than pee, and you really think I was gonna beat a puzzle game? Nah, sorry, son. But after Valve's frustration with the Xbox 360 and its policies on releasing patches and new content after doing the Orange Box, they announced that the PlayStation 3 version of Portal 2 would have a shed load of exclusive features, such as a crossplay on co op with the Steam version of Portal 2, and more importantly here, a whole host of PlayStation Move exclusive features. With the PS Move, you can play both the single player and the co op, but the Mad Lads at Six Ents created exclusive levels for the PS Move and Razor Hydra called Portal 2 in Motion. What's the Razor Hydra? Fuck if I know. But that's right, ladies and gents, there are official Portal 2 levels out there you probably haven't played. Damn, that could have been a video on its own. Portal levels you never played. Oh well, roll VT. Huh, only level zero is ready to go from the start, but you know what, that's cool. I got the reason to jump ahead. So we got a simple tutorial here, where we get to look around, get used to the controls, and are introduced to a mechanic called one to one, where you can push the move controller forward, sending the cube forward in game. An interesting idea, and I'm looking forward to seeing what this extra mode has to offer. Oh no. 
No, 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 no! There were four updates before I could play this bastard thing, and I honestly thought the extra levels were put in like a patch or something. But no, it turns out it was accessed through Steam, and through research, this connectivity ended in 2018. Which, in fairness, is actually quite a long time for Valve. Uh, they weren't exactly update friendly during the seventh generation of gaming, as we've already discussed. All is not lost though. Sure, we lost that clickbait title, but we can still play the base game, both single player and co op with the PS Move controls. We don't have any of the features from the in motion levels, such as pushing the blocks and, um, well, I didn't get the photo rest, but you can see here how it looks to play. Truthfully, it works rather well, and it's not a bad way to play Portal 2. It's really rewarding to flip the controller from one side of the screen to the other quickly to shoot a portal and ace a puzzle. With L2 being the orange portal and T being the blue portal, it really does feel great. I can see myself finally beating Portal 2, and I think it will be with the move and Navi controller of all things. Yes, I know this is a lynchable offense. Here's my gravestone. I got it ready for you. All right, enough of them. Let's go back to the PlayStation Move exclusive games, as I feel our good to bad game ratio here is a bit rubbish and we need to up those numbers by the end of the video. Racket Sports! Kind of a massive drop in quality, huh? Here we have a game that feels shat out and you can tell just by looking at this game and my lord you can tell when you're playing it. While Sports Champions Table Tennis actually feels like how a twister controller will affect the ball, in this game it does not matter one bit. Just swing for the fences and hope for the best. Here's the best way to illustrate the quality and variety of this game. We got badminton, squash, tennis, beach tennis, and table tennis. In the words of the great Naruto Uzumaki, I rest my case! I don't know if you noticed or not, but I've been putting the developers, publishers, and more details about each game on the screen, and most of the games I've covered so far are actually first-party Sony-owned companies. And this isn't going to stop now during this video, but this next game was the first time I actually sat up and went, oh, okay then. And that's because SIE Japan Studio made this. The Ape Escape series, Loco Roco, Soul Sacrifice, Team Project Siren Slash Gravity, the Azobi team, these guys and gals have such a damn good track record! Kung Fu Rider, hit me with your best shot, man! <laughs> Kung Fu Rider is fucking terrible. It's a shame, as Kung Fu Rider has a very fun art style to it. I like its personality. Although it's set in Hong Kong, both our protagonists are super British. It's got a fun nature to it. I really like seeing how your character reacts to what's going on via a small screen in the corner, while also acting as a health indicator. Heck, the idea of trying to escape the triads on a small item with wheels like an office chair, vacuum cleaner, or a baby's chair, each with their own stats to mix up gameplay, is a super fun concept. But these controls just suck. <laughs> it's one of those motion control games that relies on most of the key controls being tied to motion gestures. Granted it works better than say if it was released on the Wii, but my god this feels horrible! Kung Fu Rider is a game where, as mentioned before, you try and escape the Hong Kong triad by riding on corny items. Along the way you'll have to avoid obstacles, grind on railings and take out triad members to get to your objective, which is an escape van. You play as either Toby or Karin, a private investigator and secretary respectively. There we go, story done, back to the janky ass controls. In total fairness, the tutorial levels try their best to show you how to play the game, and the beginning levels have enough open space that you can sort of do the levels in style on your first try, but as soon as branching paths, multiple levels, and sharp turns get involved, the game simply becomes unplayable. I should have come off my vehicle a lot more than I did, considering how many walls I blasted into at full pelt. There are brake controls, and if you really tilt the control, you can do like a heavy version of a turn, but to me, the controls are fundamental to any game. I feel like you have to get these right to make a game fun, especially if there isn't much for a game to fall back on, such as, say, a good story. I could joke further about how this game makes you grind more than a Tony Hawk game and go deeper into the controls to dissect more of why this game blows ass, but I'm done here. I really should have looked into what SIE Japan had made before jizzing about them on video, huh? Medieval Moves is yet another on-rails experience. Take a drink, and it's rather fun. The TLDR version of the game is that uh, it's an on-rails action game where you face loads of minor battles in a level by using a sword, shield, or bow and arrow combo, with mini games thrown in along the way, and a very corny but simple enough story. I really don't have much to say about this game, but I wanted to spotlight it because it had some pretty damn good bow and arrow controls, uh, a lot better than Sports Champions, so uh, GG Medieval Moves for that one. Nice one. I've shown you a lot of games so far, that of which I paid with my own dollar 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 dollar. But what if you don't want to pay, said dollar 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 dollar? Well, there are demos on the PlayStation Store, and uh, let's check out some demos, because um, maybe if any of them are good, we can follow up on them in a sequel episode. 
SIE Japan hurt me earlier with Kung Fu Rider, but let's give them another shot with Ape Escape, an original entry in the Ape Escape series, just for the move. Sadly, this is on rails, taking away the freedom that you normally have in an Ape Escape game. Part of the fun of actually catching the monkeys is the platforming, looking around the level for the little bastards, planning ahead and being tactical of how you finally make the monkey taste your net. Stripping all that away, what do you have? An underwhelming demo that would leave a bad taste in any Ape Escape fan's mouth. This franchise since Ape Escape 3 has been relegated to spin-offs and the like, so that would add even more to the saltiness of Ape Escape fans. I mean, the controller works great, something I've said often during this video, as the monkey net, and we also have some other gadgets to play around with, including a vacuum that just sucks everything up, but as rail shooters go, you can do a lot better than this, sadly. Now I just want to play Metal Gear Solid Snake Escape. Shout out to the cute anime cutscenes, though. I'll knock you down, I'll knock you down again, I'll make you frown as I claim the crown again. Step in the ring, know what Dusty Room will do as I smack you up and crack you with the 0 one two. Holy crap, I want to make a music video for this track. The fight is one of those games that tries to take itself so seriously with its dark muddy color palette and videos of Danny Trejo pumping iron that had me howling. There's trying to look menacing and dark and then there's this. This looks fucking disgusting. So you want to be a fighter? I can fix that. I'm Duke. So you want to be a fighter, huh? Best in the world even. That's a big dream kid. Sure, I can help you, but I need everything you've got. Blood, sweat, time, dedication, tears. Everything. You think you can do that for me? <laughs> Great. Training starts tomorrow. I'll make you the best Pac-Man in the world. The demo allows us to get to grips with the basic controls of the game. Uh, one controller in each hand, and you get to go to town on a training dummy. For a couple of minutes, then it's all over. Insert sex jokes here. I mean, it controlled a bit rough around the edges, but I want to play this game. This demo has sold me. I want to see where they were going with this. If we ever do a sequel episode, we are covering this. This game looks too funny to miss. Oh yeah, we're coming back to this. Sorcery's most notable feature is what they named the difficulty levels. We got casual, pretty standard for easy mode, gamer for normal difficulty, and nightmare for hard mode. Besides that, we have an RSI-inducing amount of flicking which took me out of the game in 10 minutes. My wrists are in so much pain, I could not go on. Heavy rain! Yeah. Quantic Dream's badly aged game also have move enhancements, and no bullshit, I would say this is the best way to play the game if you wanted to try it nowadays. Firstly, you can now use just the stick to move around. In the base game, you had to hold R2 before you could use the thumbstick to walk. Secondly, these movements are more fun to do with a move controller than it is with a right thumbstick. Like I said, if you really want to play Heavy Rain, this is probably the best way to do it, but mainly because I think it would give the funniest results, as the game itself is not all there. We have played many a video game during this episode, and don't you worry, there is more to come. Don't you worry. But I believe we've played too many video games. Now, no, 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 don't you leave, don't you leave. There is more to come, as I said. But what if I told you this? Harry Potter. Right, do you know it? Do you like it? Well, yes or no, I don't care. Because, believe it or not, Sony made an official Harry Potter book called The Wonder Book. So, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the wonder book that's it keep levitating the toad oh he doesn't know what hit him i just feel like i was lied to you know Harry Potter, I hear it's big. My history with it, I've seen all the original Harry Potter films, but I remember jack shit about them. Apart from the Death Eaters being pretty dang cool, the ending of Chamber of Secrets having like a big snake or something, and that it's the Philosopher's Stone. Saying all that, I really enjoyed the Chamber of Secrets console game and the Harry Potter world at Universal Florida. Jesus Christ, I love that place so damn much. And then there's this, Wonder Book, Book of Spells. Huzzah, Harry Potter fans? You may have noticed during this video that the uh, move does augmented reality sometimes, such as in Start the Party, where the move controller turns into stuff related to the minigame that you're playing. Well here, SCE London Studio took the augmented reality idea and went full on with it, having the entire game be controlled by a book and your move controller. Nifty idea, I guess, but let's see how it plays out. Before we talk about the game, let's talk about the setup. So, every game I've played so far has been calibrated really easily. It takes like a few seconds and bada bing bada boom, we're ready to play. The Wonder Book took me and my little brothers 10 minutes to try and get the PSI camera to accept that my room is not the brightest and try to cheese it by using the flash on my phone. But in the end, we just gave up and skipped the game's advice and hoped for the best. It ended up working out, so um, 
as long as your room isn't pitch black, you can play this game perfectly fine. So yeah, this is an official Harry Potter game, illustrated by the Pottermore logo and adverts shown after the setup. And uh, before you even get to play the game, you get asked if you want to link a Pottermore account. Pottermore? I hardly knew her, I said to my younger brothers when this came up. They didn't get it. I didn't either. After realising my safety strap kind of ruined the whole you're holding a wand thing, picking a house and taking a photo, we dust off the book and uh, out came an owl and it seemed to give us clearance to use this book. It turns out this book is a book of spells written by Miranda Goshawk, who um... Harry Potter fan, someone help me out here. The game says that she's a witch and gives us a little bit of backstory, but besides that, I don't give a fuck. My little bro got tired of the narrator's ramblings, and we got into our first bit of gameplay. Book of Spells has two types of gameplay. Learning spells and hearing tales about said spells. Right, I'ma just say it straight out, this is crap. I really don't see how a Harry Potter fan can get a kick out of this. Sure you get to learn the spells you know from the films and take part in minigames using the spells, but please hear me out here. The first spell you learn here is Wingardium Leviosa, which is activated by flicking the wand in a certain way, something that only works like half the time. After being told to mess around with this jar than a frog for way too long, we were given a mini game from a familiar location and rinse and repeat. There is nothing to this game. And the storybook thing I mentioned before? Okay, imagine alright, imagine that you spent all this money on a PlayStation Move, a PSI and a Wonder Book with a game, and the game is giving you a storybook to read. I, personally, would be proper pissed off. Then again, it's a book. What did I expect? Um, you're not a Harry Potter fan, you just wouldn't get it. Alright, alright, fair point. But please allow me to give you a personal example of a licensed game that you have to play with an accessory so you can see what I mean. Dragon Ball Connect allows you to fight characters from the series and replicate iconic moves such as the Kamehameha. I am acting out shit that I think is cool, but why don't I care? Because the game is ass, it controls horribly and there's nothing to the gameplay. This is the exact same problem with Wonder Book Book of Spells. There is nothing here. I don't know how many times I can hammer the same point home. My question to all you out there is this. How did this get four games? Overall, the PlayStation Move for the PS3 is largely fine. I mean, there's some software and the tech is pretty good, especially for the time. But there wasn't enough software and, as sad as it is to say, the fact that they never added a thumbstick really haunted Sony for years to come. Sadly, I wasn't able to play every single PlayStation Move game out there due to money, time and also region restrictions. For example, I really would have enjoyed covering Fast Draw Showdown, as I remember playing an arcade cabinet of this at Universal Studios Florida in like 2005. Sports Champions 2 I couldn't find a copy of before recording, and Resident Evil 5, a game that I've played more times than I care to admit on the internet, had a gold re-release with full PlayStation Move support. Look, I'm a simple man, okay? I like my cheap knockoff gun accessories, plugging a controller in, pointing at the screen, and pulling the trigger. This, this is the reason to pick up a PlayStation Move. Sure, the previous games we covered are fine and all, well, apart from these, but there is one genre right that I grew up with and I wish there were more games of nowadays, and that is the light gun shooter. The last modern light gun shooter I got to play on home console was Until Dawn Rush of Blood in VR. The one that's basically a ghost train with pistols. But that ain't a goddamn light gun game in my opinion. Plus, the game was just jump scares the game. The game you give to that one friend who's bad with jump scares so you can record it and put it on social media. Still pretty fun though. Oh, oh, there was Blood and Truth on PlayStation VR. Uh, I wouldn't call that a light gun game, but that game is still rad. Play that if you have a PSVR right now, please. One of my favorite gaming memories of all time was my father taking away my Dreamcast and putting it in the car so I could play House of the Dead 2 on the road, and boy howdy was I grateful. These plastic guns have been in my blood since I was a young'un, a point proven by the fact that after I graduated from university, I went next door to the beach to finally play House of the Dead 5 because I noticed that it was in there when I arrived and I had no idea that game had left Japan at the time. Sure, there was the Gun Con 3 on PlayStation 3, but... <laughs> no. And there was the Wii, of course, but I feel the PS Move is the best way to get the arcade experience at home without breaking the bank. Plus, most of the best Wii light gun games came to the move. All but House of the Dead 2, you fucked up there Sega. But they did bring over House of the Dead 3, and also the only home version of House of the Dead 4, including the special chapter, that was released in later iterations of the arcade game. One that took up hours of my time was the free game package of Time Crisis Raising Storm, which, on top of the enhanced port of Raising Storm, included two Namco arcade shooters, Time Crisis 4, arcade version, and Dead Storm Pirates. Sure, Raising Storm has that piece of shit story mode we mentioned earlier, and a piss 
this poor multiplayer, but the light gun game was rather dang fun, uh, with Time Crisis 4 being a nice addition to the package. I always got stuck on the final level in the arcade, so it was nice to finally beat it, and Dead Storm Pirates? Yet another lovely addition to the package. I felt this was a good deal at launch, but now? Oh my god, yes! After House of the Dead 2, the next best House of the Dead game is Overkill by a country mile, and the enhanced port with extra levels bought to the PS3 is the best way to play the game. Maybe next to Typing of the Dead Overkill. I love the B-movie and exploitation style visuals and soundtrack, with some songs I still listen to nowadays, years after I've beaten the game. Dead Space Extraction also got a HD port to the PS3, hell yes. If you want to get it cheaper than it is on the store, I recommend getting the Dead Space 2 Limited Edition, and um, when you get it, it comes on the disc and you can install it through there, so there you go, little tip, don't say I don't save you money on this channel. Uh, heck, one of the launch titles of the PlayStation Move was a bloody light gun game called The Shoot, creative title I know. It's not groundbreaking, but it was nice to have an original light gun game being released at that time. Best of all, all playable in co-op. So if you bought two PS Move controllers for the more immersive games and felt a bit burnt afterwards, hand over a Move controller to your best pal, or in my case little brother, I swear I didn't scar him with Dead Space, and have fun together shooting stuff up. So from the games we have played, is the PS Move worth it? Well, if you have a PS3 compatible Move controller already lying around, or from your PSVR, then I hope I spotlighted a few games worth your time. If you don't have one, well, unless you love a good light gun game, I would say pass on it unless something here really caught your eye. I wanted to end on a positive, so that's why I saved the PlayStation Move light gun games till last. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching it, and I hope I informed you at least somewhat on if you would like this or not. Uh, everyone's a bit different, and as I said, there's a lot of negativity around it, but there are some good games hidden behind this weird penis-shaped paywall. I'm happy this is out of my mind now though, I've been wanting to make this video for like 6 plus years, and there may be a sequel, don't get me wrong, because there are some games I didn't get to play due to, you know, time and money and the such as um oh i never got around to playing rambo the game <laughs>